I would say if you, if you look at the, uh, the markets, how they're priced, uh, I think they're fairly priced for a Fed on pause for the time being. That's what our house view is, that they're on pause in the first half, and then they'll come back in the second half. It fits with our technical rates. And what are they going to have to see right in the now. second half, by the way, to switch? Uh, well, I think it's going to be more, you know, you know this, is, this is a bit away from the technicals, but, I mean, na naturally that would fit with an equity rally into the second half. The data started to come back, global PMI is lifting. And the data does its job for them, where you know they're just coming to the data in the markets at that point. You're seeing an equity, but you're you're anticipating an equity rally in the second half. Uh, we are. So the, the easy part of the oversold bounce is done. The technical signaling, you know, that the, the forecast value we got from that is behind us. We're at the let's say uncomfortable point of having to make the qualitative decision: was that a bear market bounce, or is this a sustainable rally? The signals we're getting from the more cyclical, high beta uh, industry groups like semiconductors, they lean toward this being a sustained right. rally and a reaction to the policy uh, moves we've seen. What happens so if we don't get the rally in the second half? Um, that, that would indicate that, that PMIs and, and growth expectations are dropping. You would need to see unemployment start rising in the United States, and that would be more of a, you know, credit spreads widening, that would be more of a precursor to recession sooner rather than, rather than later. And you're anticipating what's going to happen then? We're, we're uh, optimistic for the second half of the year. We'd agree with Jason that this has been a bounce in the, in the, you know, off the bottom. We're actually looking to fade this rally a little bit and then put more risk on after we get through some more um, probably negative news. Um, there's going to be some more bad news out of China. Earnings are definitely um, slowing. You know, we don't think we go into an earnings recession, but we see earnings drop to, say, 5% year-over-year growth, which is less than what is currently forecast. Um, and so there's going to be some more volatility in the, in the short term here before we get the you know, strong evidence that, this, um, that the recession is being pushed out and the cycle's we exploding. Well, well, investors. Well, yeah, go ahead. I just want to say, will I be, re you know, I read the teleprompter. Will I be reading in the teleprompter the S&P is trading at an all-time high this calendar year? Good. Yeah, absolutely. I just looked at it just to get the intraday high. 20, 29, four, 40, 29, 40, here, yeah. 29, 40, we're exactly 26, 40. So it's 300 Random points away, Yeah. which sounds like a lot. But all of a sudden, it like sneaks up on you sometimes. And you're like, oh, my God, we're back to the old highs. I just wonder. So what are the chances? Or, oh, my gosh, oh. we're back to 2300. Yeah. <laughs> 20, yeah. You could see 2300 before you see the, the highs. I mean, our, our, we're leaning, you know, on a 12 month horizon, we think stocks are higher uh, by the end of the year and, and potentially new highs. That's that's a reasonable expectation. Do you have any worry? You know, we had Ray Dalio on in, in Davos. He's calling for a recession by 2020. He says it's just, it's, in, it's inevitable. Yeah. Well, you look at aggregate economic forecasts, the, the, the consensus is second half of 2020. Um, that would lead me to think it'll either be before that or after that. Right. Um, what would cause it to be before that? The Fed moving too quickly, Fed mistake. We don't think that's the likely outcome. We think Chair Powell is going to figure out how many ways he can say patient today. Uh -huh. um, the biggest concern would be that the, the Chinese stimulus, which is significant, does not translate through to a soft landing in China. So, Jason, you head of global fixed income and U.S. equity technical strategy. That's too much. Yeah. You can, I, <laughs> do you really know enough about both? Although they seem we, we try to. Yeah. <laughs> Will we see a new high? Uh, yeah, we think so. We think as, even as early as, let's say, late third quarter this year, the S&P is uh, challenging the highs that it saw. And it's a case where you can get both. Where you but you get think a, we've got to go like six months or longer before we actually see a gain of 10 percent to get back or 11 or 12 percent to get back to that level? Uh, yeah, and, and it's not going to happen anytime soon. It, so what you tend to see, we got the sharp oversold rebound. We're now into the underside of many of the breakdown points that you had uh, from late last year. It, mm -hmm. it often takes time for the market to digest that. You know, let's say second market supply as, as individuals get back to break even. Some of them are just happy to wash their hands and, and walk away. So it we, takes time, but eventually we think we move through that. We are a long way from where we were last year, where people at points thought, oh my gosh, every time the market dips three to five percent, I need to buy because I might miss it. You're saying don't worry about that. Well, if you, if you look at, at the late 80s, late 90s, you saw similar dynamics where sharp risk off moves causes policy response. The Fed went from tightening the pause. You see stimulus out of China. It pushes, you know, this time around we have the unique part of, of the trade negotiation. Um, but in both cases, that, that policy response kind of, let's say, pushed the cycle a bit further, allowed it to play out a bit longer. Um, so 98 using what's, that what's, a, what's baked into the cake, by the way, though, on, on, the, on the trade issue with China? I mean, uh, you think it's, uh, there's, do you think the market moves materially if there's a deal on March, March 1st? I don't think it necessarily happens right on the headline. But if, if, you, like, if you use the, the pricing around the Fed policy as, as a benchmark, it's, it's kind of priced for nothing for the rest of the year. And then slight chance, I think, of, a, of an ease thereafter. How concerned are you, though, that the China situation is even worse than we think? 
take the trade war piece out of it and just their own economy and, that's, and that we catch the cold in a bad way. Well, that's where we lean you know, heavily on things like semiconductor performance. And right. if you look at semiconductor performance on a year-over-year -year basis, it tends to lead the global PMIs really well. It's the way semis reacted starting in, in mid-November, they start to outperform the S&P. That's normally something you'd see, let's say, in late 2002 or late 2008, around a cycle bottom, not in a, in a world where we're heading toward global recession. So, you know, if we're using that as our, our proxy from a technical right. perspective, we'd lead toward the idea that PMIs, you know, potentially bottom in the first half. Yeah. And, Final and word. We, yeah, we're looking at that pace of, de, of um, deceleration of declining leading economic indicators, and that kind of second derivative leads us to expect that we're bottoming and we'll see a, an upturn in the more classic leading economic indicators, but that could take another three or six months. Right.